What's up, everybody? Back with another Bible study, still here in the book of Leviticus. Today, we're going to be going through Leviticus 7. And Levit Leviticus 7 is the last chapter here in Leviticus that we're going to be talking about the sacrifices and offerings. And it's a con continuation of the last chapter, a continuation of the law of the offerings, the, the commandments of God concerning the offerings, how, did they, how they're to be offered, what's to happen. And so, before we get started, let me preach the gospel. Everyone is going to stand before God for judgment one day. Anyone who hasn't received forgiveness of sins and been made right with God is going to be judged and thrown into the lake of fire for the second death, a body and soul. This first death is just the body. Second death is body and soul, destroyed forever. God requires perfection in order to inherit eternal life, in order to be with Him in His kingdom. None of us are perfect. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. There's nothing we can do to earn a right standing with God, and that's why Jesus came. Jesus came 2,000 years ago, born as a human, faced temptation just like us, but lived a perfect life. And although he was perfect and didn't deserve any punishment, the death that we deserve in a lake of fire for our sins, he died for us on the cross. So that through him, that death is taken away from us and we receive eternal life. Through him, our sin is taken away and we receive his perfection that he lived out. His righteousness. Repent and believe the gospel. The word repent means to have a change of heart or change of mind. Uh, most of the time we see repent in the Bible, it means to turn away from your sins and turn to God. To truly turn to Him. Decide to follow God. Follow Jesus. Give your life to Him. Repent and believe the, God, the gospel. If you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins. And rose three days later. And through his sacrifice is offering you eternal life. If you believe that. That's the gospel. The good news. That Jesus d took on the punishment for us. He died for us. And through him we can receive eternal life. The good news. If you believe that. And you turn to God. Ask him to forgive you for your sins. You truly turn to him. And, and seek his forgiveness. He will forgive you. He will give you the Holy Spirit and He will give you eternal life. The Holy Spirit changes your heart and leads you to follow Him. The Holy Spirit gives you power, wisdom, discernment. He'll forgive you. He'll give you the Holy Spirit and He will give you eternal life. Repent and believe the gospel. Give your life to Jesus today. There's not much time left. Now let's get into Leviticus 7. And after Leviticus 7, we're going to get more into the commandments of God regarding uh, more of what would apply to us right now. Right right now, there is no priesthood. There are no animal sacrifices going on. Um, there is no tabernacle. So a lot of this doesn't apply to us right now. But the law isn't done away with. We need to keep as much of it as biblically possible. We are in a new covenant now. Uh, I would say not fully. We're not going to be fully in the new covenant until after the millennial reign of Christ. But the new covenant is in the blood of Yeshua. And basically, right now we're... See, God looks at it like a, in a, like a relationship. Right now, we're engaged to Him, but we're not married yet. But once we're brought into his kingdom and given our new bodies, new eternal bodies, that's when we will be truly in the new covenant, but not fully in the new covenant until after the millennial reign of Christ, because there's still going to be mortals during the millennium. It's not till after that, till after the final judgment, that we're going to truly be in the new covenant. But the law doesn't change. But again, the earthly the earthly tabernacle and the things regarding it are a copy of the heavenly. And and that's that has to do with the two covenants as well. But there will be animal sacrifices. This stuff will be carried out during the millennial reign of Christ, during the thousand year reign after the tribulation time. So it is stuff we need to know. It's Like I said, it's not stuff that we're living out right now because it can't be bibli biblically done. 
but one day it will be and Jesus is going to be the high priest and the Bible says the sons of Zadok who were priests during the time of David are going to be the, the priests for, for him as well <clears throat> so Leviticus 7 again this is a continuation of what we talked about in the last chapter going through the different offerings and different commandments regarding them now this is the law of the guilt offering it is most holy in the place where they slay the burnt offering they are to slay the guilt offering and again this is outside of the tabernacle uh, somewhere outside the tabernacle near the altar of burnt offering likely now this is the law of the guilt offering it is, it is most holy in the place where they slay the burnt offering they are to slay the guilt offering and he shall sprinkle its blood around on the altar so the guilt offering and the burnt offering well more specifically with the guilt offering this time sprinkle the blood around on the altar then he shall offer from it all its fat and this is a common theme with all these offerings all these animal sacrifices then he shall offer from it all its fat the fat tail and the fat that covers the intestines and the two kidneys with the fat that is on them which is on the loins and the lobe on the liver he shall remove with the kidneys the priest shall offer them up in smoke on the altar as an offering by fire to Yahuwah. It is a guilt offering. Every male among the priests may eat of it. So the guilt offering, uh, the priest could eat, eat some of it. And this is, uh, again, a common theme with all the different offerings, except the burnt offering. And we we'll actually will touch on that here in a minute because the burnt offering was skinned. And then, then, burnt, then burned on the altar, a burnt offering. So we'll get to that here in a minute. It says, Every meal among the priests may eat of it. Speaking about the guilt offering. It shall be eaten in a holy place. It is most holy. The guilt offering is like the sin offering. There is one law for them. So the same law for the guilt offering and the sin offering. There's one law for them. The priest who makes atonement with it shall have it. So the priest who offers it shall have it, shall eat it. Now, the priest who offers the fat and the kidneys and the liver um, shall have the meat to eat. Also the priest who presents any man's burnt offering. That priest shall have for himself the skin of the burnt offering which he has presented. And again, we went through the burnt offerings in chapter 1 and the burnt offerings were skinned. And then cut into pieces and then uh, the, the animal that was cut into pieces was put on the altar and burned but the skin was for the priest to eat also the priest who presents any man's burnt offering that priest shall have for himself the skin of the burnt offering which he has presented likewise every grain offering that is baked in the oven and everything prepared in a pan or griddle shall belong to the priest who presents it Every grain offering mixed with oil or dry shall belong to the sons of Aaron, to all alike. And so, again, with the grain offerings, they would uh, offer a memorial portion to God, a certain amount. Uh, one of the, I think the last chapter mentioned like a handful of the flour. But if it was baked, there would be a certain portion that they would offer um, on the altar of burnt offering to God. But then they would have the rest to eat. Likewise, and let me just skip down here. Um, now this is the law of the sacrifice of peace offerings, which shall be presented to Yahuwah. So the peace offerings. So we just talked about the guilt offerings, the, the burnt offerings, the grain offerings, and now the peace offerings. Now this is the law of the sacrifice of peace offerings, which shall, pre which about, shall be presented to Yahuwah. If he offers it by the way of thanksgiving, or by way of thanksgiving, so there's different types of peace offerings. You can offer a thanksgiving peace offering just to give thanks to God. But then we're going to see here in a minute, there's also 
a votive or free will offering. A votive uh, in regards to vows, making a vow to God, or a free will offering just just to offer a free will offering to God. But this one right here is more specifically a Thanksgiving offering, thanking God for just you. I guess thanking God in general or for, some, for something specific. I don't know. <clears throat> now this is the law of the sacrifice of peace offerings, which shall be presented to Yahuwah. If he offers it by the by way of thanksgiving, then along with the sacrifice of thanksgiving, which is the, speaking about the animal sacrifice, he shall offer unleavened cakes mixed with oil, and unleavened wafers spread with oil, and cakes of well stirred fine flour mixed with oil. With the sacrifice of his peace offerings for thanksgiving, he shall present his offering with cakes of leavened bread. So cakes of leavened bread, um, which is interesting because it's normally unleavened. With cakes of leavened bread. Of this he shall present one of every offering as a contribution to Yahuwah. One of every offering, one of every... Uh, a grain offering, I believe, the, the cakes and the wafers. And it says, cakes of leavened bread. Of this he shall present one of every offering as a contribution to Yahuwah. It shall belong to the priest who sprinkles the blood of the peace offerings. So again, with the, with the grain offerings, there's going to be a portion of it given and the rest is for the priest to eat. So that's the only one uh, as far as the peace offerings. That's, the peace offerings is the only one that you're offering a grain offering and an animal sacrifice. Now as for the flesh of the sacrifice of his thanksgiving peace offerings, it shall be eaten on the day of his offering. He shall not leave any of it over until morning. So it has to be as far as the, the thanksgiving peace offerings. It has to be eaten the same day. And I believe this is referring to the, to the priest eating it. Because I don't think that people would eat of their own sacrifices. And unless I misunderstand that. But every time we see it, it's, it's the priest that's, that's, that's given the... And I think we just read that. The priest that's uh, given the... the food to eat and actually doesn't say right here now as for the flesh of the sacrifice of thanksgiving peace offerings it shall be eaten on the day of his offering he shall not leave any of it over until morning but if the sacrifice of his offering is a votive or, and again in regards to vows or a free will offering it shall be eaten on the day that he offers the sac his sacrifice and on the next day what is left of it may be eaten but what is left over from the flesh of the sacrifice on the third day shall be burned with fire so again the the peace offerings the thanksgiving peace offerings uh you eat the eat, eat eat it the same day but as far as the votive or free will offerings peace offerings you can eat it that same day or the next day but on the third day you have to burn it if there's any left but what is left over from the flesh of the sacrifice on the third day shall be burned with fire so if any of the flesh of the sacrifice of his peace offerings should ever be eaten on the, on the third day he who offers it will not be accepted and it will, and it will not be reckoned to his benefit it shall be an, an offensive thing, and the person who eats of it will bear his own iniquity. And this is a, uh, you know, that's why it kind of seems that it's speaking about the the people who are, who are offering eating it. Uh, but maybe, maybe it's just speaking about the priest. I'm just wondering because 
It says, he who offers it will not be accepted if, 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 it's, if any of it's eaten on the third day. And if the priest, if it was only the priest, then it would be the priest's fault. The other person would be guilty because the, because the priest didn't eat it. Or the, because the priest ate it on the third day and didn't burn it on the third day. Which uh, doesn't exactly make sense that it would cause the other person to be guilty because it wouldn't be their fault. But... Actually, let's go back to... Let's go back over here. It's chapter 3, I believe. Let me see if it says... The Peace Offerings, chapter 3. So it doesn't say in chapter 3 in regards to the peace offerings if it's the priest eating it or not. But every other case, it is the, it's only the priest eating of the sacrifices. So I think that's what it's referring to here. But again, it says... Uh, I'm going to just read it back from verse 15 again. Now, as for the flesh of the sacrifice of his thanksgiving peace offerings, it shall be eaten on the day of his offering. He shall not leave any of it over until morning. Say, so he shall not leave any of it over until morning. Maybe he's speaking about the priest. It says, but if the sacrifice of his offering is a, a votive or free will offering, it shall be eaten on the day that he offers the sacrifice. And on the next day, what is left left of it may be eaten. But what's left of it, left over from the flesh of the sacrifice on the third day, shall be burned with fire. So any of the flesh of the sacrifice of his peace offerings, so if any of the flesh of the sacrifice of his peace offerings should ever be eaten on the third day, he who offers it will not be accepted. And it will be reckoned as an offensive thing, and he, the person who eats it will bear his own iniquity. So I'm going to just continue. I lean toward it just being referring to the priest, but I'm not sure. It doesn't say specifically there. And I'm not sure if we... I'm not sure if it's mentioned in another place in Scripture. If I do figure it out, I'll, I'll let you guys know. Also the flesh that touches anything unclean shall not be eaten. It shall be burned with fire. As for other flesh, anyone who is clean may eat such flesh. So any animal, any, any meat from any animal that touches anything unclean, whether that's uncleanness from a person or, which will, like I said, we'll get into that later in Leviticus, whether it's uncleanness from a person or uncleanness from another un unclean animal and we'll get more into that later on but any flesh of any animal that touches anything unclean isn't to be eaten but any any other flesh that that is clean and hasn't been made unclean by something unclean may be eaten by somebody clean but if, if the person is in his uncleanness or the person is unclean by touching an unclean animal or by human uncleanness or whatever it is, uh, he did not eat of it. Also, the flesh that touches anything unclean shall not be eaten. It shall be burned with fire. As for the other, as for other flesh, anyone who is clean may eat such flesh. But the person who eats the flesh of the sacrifice of peace offerings which belongs to Yahuwah. And so, it, again, it just mentions a person and not the priest. So maybe with peace offerings, the person got to eat of it rather than only the priest. I'm not sure. I, 
I have to dig a little bit deeper into that. So I'm sure it, I'm sure we do have it have the answer to, to that somewhere here in scripture, but I'm not sure at the moment. But the person who eats the flesh of the sacrifice of peace offerings, which belongs to Yahuwah in his uncleanness. So if you're un like like I just said, like we just mentioned, if the person is unclean by human uncleanness or by touching something else that's unclean. And we'll get more of the, into the clean, the clean and unclean later, later on in Leviticus. But any person who eats the flesh of the sacrifice of peace offerings, which belongs to Yahuwah in his uncleanness, that person shall be cut off from his people. This is serious. That person shall be cut off from his people. When anyone touches anything unclean, whether hu human uncleanness or an unclean animal, or any unclean detestable thing and eats of the flesh of the sacrifice of peace offerings which belong to Yahuwah that person shall be cut off from his people so I mean because that's a, because in partaking in eating of the animal of, of eating of the sacrifice that's being offered to God you're par partaking in in this offering to God, you're partaking, basically eating with God. But if you do that in your uncleanness, if you're unclean and you do that, you're going to be cut off from your people. Um, it's a serious thing. Because God is holy. And he's not going to be around any type of uncleanness. Then Yahuwah spoke to Moses saying, Speak to the sons of Israel saying, You shall not eat any fat from an ox, a sheep, or a goat. And this would go for any animal. Uh, God tells us not to eat the fat or the blood. And this, I believe, would, would apply to us today as well. Also, the fat. I even hesitated on... I was going to get some burgers the other day. Get, I was going to get some ground beef the other day. And... I mean, it's something I got to take to the Lord. But I even... You know, because they have the 80%... Uh, I think it's 75%, 80%, 93%, 96%, which is 96% fat-free, but 4% fat. So that's still eating of the fat. 4% of it is fat. Because they, you know, when, when slaughtering the animals, when um, they just grind up the fat with the meat, they don't, they're not careful enough to truly separate it. Um, and so it's ground up together. So I I avoided I was gonna get some uh, ground beef the other day and I, I avoided it because of that and um, this is something you know something I gotta take to the Lord and I would suggest you guys do the same but especially like if you if you have a steak or something if you have uh, something that clearly has fat on it don't eat the fat cut it off cut it off eat the eat the meat but not the fat. And that would mean avoiding, I mean, already, I mean, avoid pork for sure. Um, but even like turkey bacon and stuff, that, I mean, it's fat. There's a lot of fat in bacon. Uh, so, I mean, that's another thing I would be careful with and take to the Lord. Also the fat, and so let me just bring it back to verse 22. Then Yahuwah spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the sons of Israel, saying, You shall not eat any fat from an ox, a sheep, or a goat. Also the fat of an animal which dies, and the fat of an animal which is torn by beasts, you, you may put to any other use, but you must certainly not eat it. For whoever eats the fat of the animal from which an offering by fire is offered to Yahuwah. Even the person who eats shall be cut off from his people. You are not to eat any blood, either bird or animal, in any of your dwellings. Any person who eats any blood, that person shall be cut off from his people. Now, 
Then Yahuwah spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the sons of Israel, saying, He who offers the sacrifice of his peace offerings to Yahuwah shall bring his offering to Yahuwah from the sacrifice of his peace offerings. His own hands are to bring offerings by fire to Yahuwah. So, let me just read this again. Then Yahuwah, the Lord, said to Moses, saying, Speak to the sons of Israel, saying, He who offers the sacrifice of peace offerings to Yahuwah shall bring his offering to Yahuwah from the sacrifice of his peace offerings. His own hands are to bring offerings by fire to Yahuwah. He shall bring the fat with the breast, that the breast may be presented as a wave offering before Yahuwah. The priest shall offer up the fat and smoke on the altar, but the breast shall belong to Aaron and his sons. So again, regarding the peace offerings, maybe the, my own question that I was speaking about a minute ago uh, is answered here. It says, His own hands are to bring offerings by fire to Yahuwah. But it says, The priest shall offer up the fat and smoke on the altar. But the breast shall belong to Aaron and his sons. You shall give the right thigh to the priest as a contribution from the sacrifices of your peace offerings. The one among the sons of Aaron who offers the blood of the peace offerings and the fat the right thigh shall be his portion. For I have taken the breast of the wave offering and the thigh of the contribution from the sons of Israel, from their sacrifices of their peace offerings, and given them to Aaron the priest and his sons as their due forever from the sons of Israel. So, again, the, the question isn't really answered. It says the, it says the breast and the right thigh is, are given to the Aaron and his sons to eat. But what about the rest of the animal? Maybe the rest of the animal is for the person to eat who's offering. I'm not exactly sure. It says, For I've taken the breast of the wave offering. And, and again, the wave offering, you, you would take... take uh, the wave offering can be done with uh, grain or... I'm pretty sure it can be done with grain or, in this case, the, the breast of the peace offering. Wave it to God. For I've taken the breast of the wave offering and the thigh of the contribution from the sons of Israel from the sacrifices of their peace offerings and have given them to Aaron the priest and to their sons as their due forever from the sons of Israel. This is that which is consecrated to Aaron and that which is consecrated to his sons from the offerings by fire to Yahuwah. And that day when he presented them to serve as priest to Yahuwah. These Yahuwah had commanded to be given to them from the sons of Israel. In the day when he anointed them. It is their due forever throughout their generations. So of the peace offerings, the, the breast and the right thigh are to be given to Aaron and his sons. But it doesn't say about the rest of the animal, specifically either in chapter 3 or in chapter 7 here. And I don't believe it said anything in chapter 6. Let me just go back to chapter 6 real quick, see if it mentioned anything. I don't think it says. All right, we're almost done here with the chapter. Let's see. Verse 37, This is the law of the burnt offering, the grain offering, and the sin offering, and the guilt offering, and the ordination offering. And uh, that's what we just talked about. Um, the context... Uh, contribution, I believe, the ordination offering. I could be wrong, but that's 
that's what I was just referring to when Aaron and his sons were ordained as the priests. It was set that they would be given the, the right thigh and the, and the breast of the peace offering. This is the law of the burnt offering, the grain offering, and the sin offering, and the guilt offering, and the ordination offering, and the sacrifice of peace offerings, which Yahuwah commanded at Mount Sinai, and that they went, that he commanded the sons of Israel to present their offerings to Yahuwah in the wilderness of Sinai. Hallelujah. That's uh, the end of Levit Leviticus 7, and that's the end of us speaking about the sacrifices for the time being. Of course, it's going to come up through, throughout uh, Scripture as we go through. But chapter 8, actually, matter of fact, chapter 8 is is uh, the consecration of Aaron and his sons. And that's, we already read about that in Exodus, but we're going to go through that again in Leviticus. So we will speak a little bit more about the offerings in the next chapter or two, but that's the first seven chapters here, it's mainly, and I don't think it's in a, in a, an accident, it's seven, seven chapters. The first seven chapters are about the offerings, the burnt offering, the peace offering, the sin offering, the guilt offering, and the grain offering, and um, how they're to be offered. Hallelujah. And I know there's a deeper meaning to all this. Maybe God will reveal more later on. But He does reveal a lot through through the study of His Word, through the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. But brothers and sisters, let's keep Afghanistan in our prayers. Keep our brothers and sisters over there in our prayers. I'm sure they're still being hunted down. Pray for their strength. Pray for their peace. Pray for their endurance. Pray for their provisions. Uh, pray that even if they have to be killed that it would be painless and that none of them would deny him let's pray for them continue to pray for Haiti there's over over a thousand people that died in the earthquake recently and it's you know still a lot of people I'm sure that don't have a home right now still a lot of people injured Let's keep them in our prayers. And let's be ready. Let's be right with God. We, on, we only have a couple more weeks until the feast, until the fall feast days. Matter of fact, I think two weeks from today, I think I just decided, well, I think God led me to, to, to go ahead and keep the feast days this year on, on the days that the, that the Jews are keeping it on the Hebrew calendar. Uh, which I did this which which I've done over the last couple of years and I think I'm gonna um rather than calculating the calendar to a day I I believe maybe the correct calendar um I think I'm just gonna keep it on that day uh which I believe two weeks from today the seventh I believe is uh the feast of trumpets so we got that coming up and Lord willing, we're going to continue on here through Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and then the rest of the Bible. We have uh, not too much left, but we'll see how it goes, see what God leads. But we need to stay focused on Him. We need to be ready. Um, we need to overcome and be blameless before Him. Let's serve Him with all our heart and walk in all His ways. Let's shine His light and show His love. And if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, turn to him. Give your life to Jesus today. There's not much time left. The judgment of God is coming upon this world. And when it does, it's about to be over. It is about to be so bad. Billions of people are going to die. But you can be saved. You can receive eternal life. There's people in this world who aren't even going to die. They're going to be transformed into a new eternal body and taken into his kingdom. And you have that opportunity as well. Repent and believe the gospel. Give your life to Jesus today. That's the end of Leviticus 7. That's the end of uh, the law. The laws of the offerings. Thank y'all for, for tuning in. Love y'all. Shalom.